Welcome to the Daily Horror Habit Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Krieger, bringing you daily reviews of current and classic horror movies for your twisted pleasure. Be aware that these reviews and discussions may include spoilers. And as always, I hope you enjoy. There's nothing more terrifying than growing up. Whether it's increased responsibilities, changes to one's body, or simply facing the reality that our relationships with others begin to alter at warp speed. Friends move away, start families, or those relationships simply just drift away. It's a disconcerting feeling, one that can leave a person feeling powerless, but there is power in accepting that which we cannot change, and sometimes we just need a hellish Cthulhu monster to show us that. With The Arbors, which is currently streaming on Video On Demand, writer and director Clayton Whitmore and co-writer Chelsea Cummings weave a story of family and the growing pains that come with age within the familiar construct of a monster movie. We meet reclusive locksmith Ethan, played by Drew Matthews, who is stuck. He's stuck in a job he's indifferent to, stuck in a town he can't seem to leave behind, shackled by his yearning for the past. He attempts to hang on to a dwindling relationship with his brother Shane, but everyone seems to be moving on with their lives. Everyone except Ethan. That is, until Ethan stumbles upon a mysterious, spider-like creature embedded inside a deer carcass. This sudden fostering gives him a sense of purpose, something to break the monotony of his norm. That is, until the creature escapes and begins killing people within the community of Arbors. Now, Ethan finds himself grappling with trying to conceal his hand in the creatures ravaging his town while trying to understand his strange connection with the creature. It's important to realize that the Arbor's narrative focus isn't primarily on its monster. While there is a body count, the film's narrative is more focused on Ethan's character arc of coming to accept that it's time to let go of the past. Drew Matthews' performance as Ethan is suitably awkward. Matthews never reveals too much of what Ethan is thinking, but constantly impresses upon the viewer just how socially detached from those around him he really is. It's a role that on some level everyone can relate to, even if it evolves into someone unrecognizable from the beginning of the film. Ethan's trying to grasp his nostalgia for the past as it slips between his fingers is hauntingly relatable. In an early scene, Ethan gives Shane a figure from a board game they played as children. While this object still carries a great deal of sentimental value for Ethan, Shane barely registers it and carelessly discards it. The contrasting forces between brothers who are opposites is as heartbreaking as it is fundamental to the film's structure. While the film does drag on a bit longer than I'd like, running nearly two hours, we could have been given one or two less examples of Ethan being a loner who has few relationships and thus few people that can vouch for his character. But just before his timid awkwardness grows trite, the film expertly blends its family drama with monster moments to switch things up. The monster itself, a spider-like Cthulhu creature with an appetite for human flesh, is never quite the star of the show, but is shown enough that it's definitely memorable. And now for a brief intermission. If you've been enjoying this episode of Daily Horror Habit, please take a moment to subscribe to the show on your preferred streaming platform or leave us a review on iTunes. And thank you for your continued support, and I hope you enjoy the remainder of today's horrifying episode. Throughout the film, the creature grows from infancy to monstrous, which is not only terrifying as its spindly legs and fangs grow more prominent, but helps to represent the passage of time. The camera rarely lingers on the monster for long, revealing bits of it before changing perspectives or cutting away. This deprives of traditional long-take monster money shots, but adds to the sense of dread and unease that makes for a more nuanced and suspenseful monster movie. And while we often see the aftermath of creature carnage rather than the actual moments of violence, the audience is treated to skin-crawling scenes of those long spindly legs emerging from holes in the wall or dragging its most recent victim into its nest. Ultimately, I found the mystery tied to the monster and Ethan's relationship to be equally compelling to the film's narrative. About halfway through the film, as people from the town are falling prey to the monster, though this is attributed to a supposed serial killer, Ethan realizes that the people being killed have a direct connection to him, their relationships often being a volatile one. This places Ethan in a precarious situation of attempting to conceal the monster's killing so as to avoid his connection to them. This further complicates and adds yet another facet to the film's genre influence when Ethan's standings within the community come into jeopardy. A vigilante mob of local townsfolk and a police officer begin to look inwards at the community for those who could be behind the killings. This adds a neo-noir flavor to the Arbors that looks at the way in which people react to crisis situations and how this can spiral out of control into violence. The Arbors is exactly my kind of monster movie, 
using an otherworldly creature as a metaphor for the plight of a human protagonist, representing their inability to grow, and feeling anchored by the past gives more significance to its narrative. If you're just looking to satiate your appetite for creature carnage, I would recommend readjusting your expectations before going into the film. But if you're looking for a monster film with heart, delivering more than just an array of kills, The Arbors delivers that better than most indie horror films do, so check it out while it's streaming on video on demand. And that'll do it for another episode of Daily Horror Habit, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for another Daily Horror Movie Review. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to Daily Horror Habit on your preferred streaming service, and follow the show on Instagram at Daily Horror Habit, and on Twitter at Daily Horror Pod for episode updates. Thanks again for listening, and I'll see you guys next time.